Hello, I'm Max Bennett, a student at Leeds Beckett studying business and management. Today I will talk about marketing organisations and their orientation, my interpretation of marketing myths and reflecting on lessons learned. There are four traditional orientations, production, product, sales and marketing. An example of production based organisation is Primark, the clothing company. For product, Apple, the personal media company. For sales, Coca-Cola. I will be focusing on marketing, mainly with Netflix, which is an online streamer of movies and television shows. A marketing org orientation is giving the customers what they want and trying to identify where their competitors fail and provide solutions, and are also big on customer services and trying to retain loyal customers and keep the repeat business going. Netflix is very much a marketing organisation, giving the customers what they want which is instant access to television series and movies advertisement free. They even pushed forward and innovated even more than anyone could have expected or predicted and started creating their own television shows such as the famous House of Cards, which in its opening week pulled a total of 6.4% of customers, which doesn't sound a lot, but when you realise they have over 57 million subscribers, it is a substantial amount. But it is because of their marketing or orientation and their willingness to listen to the market which allowed them to survive and thrive, compared to their competitor Blockbuster, which went bankrupt in 2010. Because Blockbuster didn't adapt with the times and move their company to the online market, where there was no worry of late fees or the need to actually drive to the shop to rent the movie, Netflix removed all that need and as a result is a market leader and worth over $28 billion. Showing that Netflix truly follows the traditional marketing approach and is extremely successful with it. And now I will talk about marketing myths and my interpretations of the various myths. The first marketing myth is that a big name brand can sustain a higher price. For example, Virgin Atlantic. The airway company is one of the most well known airline companies in the world and as a result Virgin Atlantic can charge a higher premium for their goods compared to other companies, companies like Eva Air. For example, a return ticket to Brisbane, Australia with Virgin will cost you £6,164 for 8 days whereas with Eva Air it costs a paltry £1,336.26 if you are booking last minute that is. Showing that it is possible for big brands to charge more and that they frequently do. On the other hand a big name brand such as Tesco's cannot sustain a higher price because they are in a highly competitive market. According to Statista, a statistics and studies website, Tesco's dominates the grocery store market with a 28% share which is huge compared to the second biggest, Asda, who only has 16%, yet they regularly advertise about having lower prices than their competitors and are part of my supermarket, helping to prove their prices are lower, showing that a big name brand can't always sustain a higher price. In conclusion, this marketing myth is true. A big brand can sustain a higher price because ultimately of convenience and fame, providing they are in the right market. My second interpretation of a marketing myth is that entering into a new market in another country is easy. It is easy if you are already a well established company. For example Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola entered into the Indian market on October 1993 and immediately gained a 60% share. But that is because they purchased Indian company Parley who also sold soft drinks and snacks. Because of Coke's buying Parley it meant they had an easy time moving into India because it was already a well-established company and all the vendors and distributors were already set up making it incredibly easy for Coke to ship their product around the country and help maintain the dominance Parley already had in that market. On the other hand, entering into a new market in another country isn't always easy and companies face many issues <coughs> such as finding out the local language and any differing in dialects around the region and also what their local customs and culture is. One such example is the American Dairy Association. In 1993, the sales of milk in America was falling dramatically and the current advertising campaign was failing. So they realized a now very famous campaign with the slogan, Got Milk. As, a, as well as joining with codependent foods such as cookies, which helped boost their sales, this campaign almost immediately revitalized the sales of milk in America. Such was the success, the ADA tried to move into Mexico, but almost immediately faced problems. And when the ADA investigated into why, 
they found out that the direct translation of got milk into Mexican Spanish was are you lactating? An error which cost them over $300,000. This costly mistake could have been easily avoided with the right research. In conclusion, moving into a new market is easy as long as the right preparations and research have taken place. Another marketing myth is our product is so good we only need to do a little marketing. Certain products do not require a lot of high profile advertising because their product is an excellent product and it is a niche market which means that the target market should already be aware of the product. For example, Rolls Royce, they need to do very little conventional marketing to appeal to the majority of the public because the majority of the public are not their target market. Rolls-Royce, in 2014, managed to achieve record sales of 4,014 last year on their cars, not including the various other products they make, and their predicted revenue in their annual report was 23,736 million, showing that even though Rolls-Royce do very little conventional marketing, apart from appearing at certain prestigious car shows, they are still extremely successful. However, many people still possess the arrogance that they only need to do a small amount of advertising even though they are in a highly competitive market, for example, the App Store for Apple. According to Statista, there are over 1.5 million apps on the market yet to be downloaded. And according to Tim Cook, CEO of Apple, over 60% of the apps haven't been downloaded. This means that over 600,000 apps have never been downloaded. If they did more marketing for their product, rather than expecting customers to trawl through 1.5 million apps to find theirs, then you can generate more sales. In conclusion, requiring no marketing because you have an excellent product is a major marketing myth that should be stamped out. My reflection on lessons learned. As the world becomes more connected than ever, thanks to the World Wide Web, basic marketing mistakes are becoming less common as it becomes easier to find out more about a country's culture and language than ever before thanks to things such as Google and its translation abilities. However, that being said, mistakes are still being made, such as IKEA not realising that Russia celebrate Christmas almost two weeks after we do on the 7th of January, making the products seem quite premature, and it also makes IKEA look like it doesn't care enough about Russia to do any substantial research on its traditions. This has caused marketing companies to spring up such as Oban, Oban is a company that has people worldwide who are nationals, so they understand the local market, customs and cultures. They are hugely successful as people, are learning from their mistakes and relying on marketing companies who have an understanding of the local cultures. However, companies still make mistakes, as hiring a marketing company is a costly endeavour and many companies want to save money and bite the bullet and enter a new market or niche without properly researching them first. What I have learned from my research is that even though companies have access to the entire world at their fingertips through the use of the internet, they still frequently make mistakes simply by not doing enough research. It is also incredibly hard to debunk a marketing myth because there are thousands of markets and what myth may apply to one market doesn't necessarily mean it will apply to another, meaning that a specific company will need to do plenty of research into their market to make sure they are making the right decisions. But then, there are always companies that break the mould and give the customers what they didn't realise they wanted, which opens up a whole new market, which would make doing marketing research quite hard, especially if you're trying to keep your product secret from the competitors. With this creation of the new market, where the market leaders decide where to go and what trends to set, for example Netflix and the creation of online streaming of movies and their own original series, with companies such as Amazon and their pro company Amazon Prime copying the idea of creating their own original series. My experience is that generally companies are improving and that marketing myths are more and more being ignored and people are being more cautious um, with, the, with the access to the internet. But despite this improvement, many companies continually make mistakes that could have easily been avoided through a few seconds of searching.